Hey, Mike Lake, Altabone.com. I am super psyched because 10 minutes ago, my doorbell rang, and what would you know, but I got delivery of my new iMac Pro. And it was a week earlier than it was projected by Apple. How's that for new, right? I ordered this thing four days after it came out. I did a lot of research on it in those four days. Um, and what this video is gonna do, we're gonna unpack a little bit and we're gonna verify that this works with the Apollo interface going to Logic Audio. So, uh, like I said, I did a lot of research. I talked to a lot of people. Everybody tells me it's gonna work. I don't expect it to be plug and play exactly because I've got a ton of plugins that I've got to put into the new machine, but my, uh, trusty 20, late 2012 iMac is destined to be a second monitor now. Uh, I've struggled with it. I've been uh, getting all sorts of messages that this, there's, there's no more CPU left, that the plugins are crashing. I got all sorts of problems that I'm believing is due to my, my uh, old workhorse iMac. And now we're going to verify that the iMac Pro is going to work perfectly with Apollo and Logic. Here we go. Okay, let's see what's in this box. Aha! Uh -huh. All right, cut the piece of tape. Oh, there it is. All right, this is the back of my 2012 iMac, and as you can tell, I'm definitely maxed out with dongles and other things. And here is pretty much the same look except for the two new Thunderbolts, which I'm badly in need of, so I'll be using those. Um, one of the things you're gonna wanna make sure you get is an adapter, and that looks like this. So these were two adapters that I needed to get. These are for the Thunderbolt. This is uh, Thunderbolt 2 in, and that's Thunderbolt 3 out. This will go, this side will go into the Mac, and this side will receive my previous cables. And I've got two of them, and I'll show you why I need that. Uh, the main uh, issue here is this, my Apollo 8. So this is connected through Thunderbolt uh, all the way around the room into my Mac. And how I accomplished that was by using a optical Thunderbolt cable from Corning. And I forget how long it is. It may be like 30 feet or so. And I've been told that all I need is my handy dandy adapter and that cable will hook back up into my Apollo and everything will seem as if uh, nothing changed other than the lightning speed of the computer. So let's test that out. All right, so now let's look inside the machine. I am upgrading a late 2012 iMac with these specs. I've maxed out on the 32 gig of RAM and I've got a one terabyte internal drive, which I think was the biggest at the time. Uh, the iMac Pro I just bought has these specs. And now I upgraded their standard configuration to the three, gig three gigahertz 10 core processor and a two terabyte solid state internal drive uh, and 64 gig of RAM. It's a sealed machine, meaning that to upgrade the RAM, you'll have to take it to a service center. So I went with the 64 gig, thinking that's gonna last me for a long time, and I hope I'm right. Um, now I had a problem booting up the Mac, the iMac Pro. I spent a lot of time staring at this. Ugh. So eventually I called Apple, and the first person I reached asked me what operating system my iMac Pro was on. Now, uh, I took that as a bad sign and I called back again. This time I reached a knowledgeable person and after booting up in safe mode, holding down the shift key by the way, I was able to get into the hard drive. So we tried a bunch of things, but what we eventually discovered was that my startup items were causing a problem. And we took a look at the Mac library's startup item. This is what that looked like. Uh, what, what it looks like right now. And we saw some things dating back to 2015, so we had me trash those. What you're looking at right now is what I've kept. Uh, they're a little more current. Uh, we did the same thing with the user library startup agents. And after trashing all of those old items, the machine booted up. Yay! 
Now, for the Apollo, uh, I launched the UAD meter and control panel, and I saw this. Not um, surprising. Fortunately, UA makes it really easy to download the drivers. Now, one thing you'll need to be aware of is that the, Mac, the iMac Pro has enhanced security. That means that before you can take advantage of the recently installed driver, you'll need to go to the security and privacy setting on the system preferences and just allow the UA drivers. Now, the Apple instructions online don't appear to be up to date because they say that the name of the block driver is in the dialog box like this, but you'll actually have to click the allow button and then choose the software from a list that you wish to allow. Now, I went in there later after allowing it just to see if I could do a screenshot for the video and the button wasn't there. So I think it just appears after a recent block. Um, anyway, after allowing it, the driver loaded and Logic worked fine. Now let's see if there's a speed benefit to the iMac Pro. I mean, I'd like to believe that I spent 8,500 bucks for a reason, uh, and, and this would be one of them, one of the many reasons. My most recent project was a Christmas song that has almost 100 tracks and many different plugins. Uh, not so many for processing, but you know, lots of instruments. All my instruments are on an external drive, so thank God I didn't have to move them. Uh, you know, I've got complete control, contact, and a whole bunch of other third parties. This project is pretty representative of over a dozen instruments from these third parties. So I figured if this would load, I'm gonna be in pretty good shape being able to access all my libraries, my instruments. So uh, I wanted to see what the difference is in speed. So first I loaded the project from the 2012 iMac. That project lives on a two year old uh, Thunderbolt 4 terabyte drive. And I think it's 7,500 RPM, not, not sure. Uh, it's a LaC drive. Here's the load on my 2012 iMac off that external drive. And I'm going to speed it up because you don't want to wait this whole time. Uh, I, you know, I had to tell UA that I don't want to buy their Voice of God plug-in from my trial, but, you know, that took very little time. Um, it, but the load took four minutes and 50 seconds, so five minutes to load this project. And, man, I've been used to that. Uh, and again, it's a big project with lots of audio and sound generating plugins, but it's a long time to wait for something to load. Now next, I loaded that project from the same external drive using the iMac Pro. Now that load took 2 minutes and 50 seconds, which according to my math is like a 40% jump in speed. Gotta love that. But last, I copied the project folder into the iMac Pro's internal drive. Now remember, these are, these are solid state drives, so I'm expecting them to be wicked quick. Um, now my workflow is gonna be to create projects on that internal drive and then transfer them to the external drive once they're finished. Now ready for this? That load took just one minute and eight seconds. And I'm also guessing I'm going to see a lot less of my old friend, the spinning beach ball. Goodbye. Uh, one important takeaway is that the Thunderbolt 2 to 3 adapters worked. Even on my 30-foot optical Thunderbolt cable connecting um, the iMac to the UA hardware across the room, I needed that, that, disc, that, that length. And I'm going to give Corning a shout-out because after more than a year, uh, after using the cable, it just stopped working, and they replaced it free. And the original cost of that was around 250 bucks. So, way to go. Uh, so early on, I, I'm not encountering any major problems other than a few small third-party utility apps requiring an authentic authentication that it's not accepting, but that's not the fault of the iMac Pro, and I'll, I'll deal with that uh, next week. So, if you're ready to buy this beast, have fun. I know I'm optimistic about many years ahead of much quicker and glitch-free music and video production, and hope this gave you a little uh, help in your decision. Thanks. Bye-bye.